Now, many flights that were canceled during the pandemic are coming back to the skies this month. Last week, Singapore Airlines and Scoot announced they're adding dozens of flights to cities across Asia. Citing strong demand and decreased border restrictions, both airlines are increasing flights between Singapore and Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. Now, most of these are reinstated flights, but Scoot's adding a few new routes, too, this month to Lombok and Makassar, Indonesia. It's also adding a seasonal nonstop flight to Sapporo for travelers who want to hit the slopes in Japan this winter. That will run from November to February. February. Now, both airlines are gearing up for more flights to China as well. So Sing Air launched services to Beijing last month. Tomorrow, it'll start flying to Chengdu once a week, too. Meanwhile, Scoot is already flying into four Chinese cities with flights to Wuhan and Zhengzhou starting next week. Now, Scoot is is not the only budget carrier ramping up services in the region. Cebu Pacific is restarting its first international route from Davao to Singapore this month, and Air Asia is resuming several flights between Malaysia and Indonesia, including a new route linking Bali to Penang. Now, finally, on the heels of Hong Kong's decreased border restrictions, Cathay Pacific's budget carrier HK Express announced plans to add more than 400 flights linking Hong Kong to Singapore, Bangkok, and several cities in Japan before the end of the year. Now, this comes amid a surge in demand among residents of Hong Kong to leave the city, but less interest from outsiders to visit. So far, I should say. So, Monica, where does this leave uh, travellers, and what does it mean for them, especially just ahead of uh, the peak travel season as we wrap up the year? Uh, the, actually, the airline said that they were starting this in order to be prepared for the holiday season. You know, I think overall it's, it's really good news for travelers. Not only will you have more options, uh, more frequent flight, flights, maybe there'll be a chance that you have a seat next to you on the flight. Don't hold your breath, but maybe. Um, but I think also competition, more planes in the sky, usually leads to prices going down. So if we see this trend next month, another, another batch of airlines start announcing more flights, um, we'll be watching to see if airfares start to decrease. Uh, we still have um, issues with staffing shortages though. So this is obviously being driven by demand. Staffing shortages are putting the halt on it. And I'd say probably nowhere more than Hong Kong. So Cathay Pacific has indicated it plans to add about 4,000 people to the roster in the next 18 to 24 months. Of course, in aviation, you don't hire someone and put them out there right away. There's training involved, especially with pilots. Um, but, you know, everybody's looks to be on the right track. Uh, we're going at different paces. Cathay Pacific says it, by the end of the year, maybe a third of its pre-pandemic travelers will be back. Uh, you compare that to Singapore air, about 81% will be back. So, you know, different paces, but recovery seems to be well underway. Yeah, uh, continuing to add capacity. Understood. Excellent, Monica. Thank you very much indeed for that. Let's uh, continue that conversation. Bring in James Marshall, Vice President of uh, Global Air at Expedia Group, who joins us from here in Singapore. James, good morning. Uh, so, if uh, they are, if the, if, the, uh, if the commercial airlines are laying on more flights and hiring again, then does, does that imply that we perhaps are close to the peak in terms of ticket prices? You know, it's very difficult to say. We know there is a very strong demand now in Asia, um, you know, especially after all the announcements, we've seen a very, a very big increase in demand, particularly to North Asia, Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, etc. So I think the fact that airlines are increasing their capacity is a very good thing. We know that, you know, uh, until now, there was a limited choice uh, for travelers. And that was one of the reasons why prices were quite high. And I think um, having this um, these broader choice, and it's not just the choice to go to Asia, but it's also the opening of some of those very important um, flight hubs, transit hubs like you know Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, that allows people to travel uh, beyond a long haul to uh, to Europe or North America. So it's great news. Um, we obviously optimistic about about the opening and the increase of capacity but the demand is still very strong especially towards the end of the year so it's going to be uh something we're going to be watching very carefully and obviously we want to make sure that travelers are able to travel and and have good prices to travel hi i'm emily tan and thanks for watching cnbc you can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more thanks for watching